Welcome back to Unlocking Your Creative Curiosity with Tammy Collins, where we explore, experiment, evolve, express, and evoke emotion through our creativity and our art. Here's a sneak peek at what's in today's video. Okay, so today we're going to be doing a textured, abstract, mixed media piece. I don't have a whole lot of thought about what I want to do. Uh, just that simply I want to do something textured. That's all I have in my mind at this point. Um, I'm going to start with uh, tissue paper. I love working with tissue paper. I'm still learning and exploring what it can and can't do. And so that's what this experiment's about. Um, I'm applying uh, some Elmer's glue, uh, really just because I'm out of uh, Mod Podge, I'm out of matte medium, and all I have on hand is Elmer's glue. So rather than be held back by uh, some boundary, I'm going to use something that I know I can use, have on hand and will work. So I, I crumpled up the tissue paper and I'm just putting it on. I wanted to have an aged feel to it. So I crumpled it so it has some texture. Um, again, I'm exploring texture. Texture on texture on texture. That's what today is all about. And um, so now I'm just using a, a paper towel to sort of stick it down. Um, obviously, Elmer's glue is not the perfect choice for this. Uh, it's a glue. It will hold it. It will um, you know, do what I needed to do, but it's not perfect. Um, you know, of course, Mod Podge or matte medium would work much better and kind of seal in the tissue paper. But you know, I'm perfectly imperfect and I'm always in a rush and I never want to wait for anything to dry. So as you can see here, you know, um, that's, you'll, you, you'll see that a lot. Um, so, Oh, what I did here was I took a piece of paper and I taped it down the middle to create two coordinating pieces. I'm not trying to replicate or duplicate. I'm just trying to make two coordinating pieces. And so when you have a piece of paper and you mask off multiple areas within that, when you create, you can create as if it were one whole piece. And then all of your colors and styles and things will coordinate and it will feel like two or three or four pieces of a set, if that makes any sense. I want them to feel like they go together, like they're a pair, but maybe aren't identical or the same. And so I'm just getting that down and I'm noticing that it's kind of not sticking right there. So I just threw a little more glue on it. Um, just kind of hitting a couple areas that don't seem to be totally stuck down. And then I'm just using a, a paper towel really just to be gentle on the paper so I don't rip it. Um, of course I will rip it. I always end up ripping it. <laughs> And I'm just using my, actually it's my bone, uh, I don't know what that's called. It's, it's a bone fold, uh, creaser or bolt. It's for paper, um, but sometimes I just use it because it's plastic nonstick surface, if you will. So right now I'm just trying to kind of crease this a little bit. I, I'm not really worried about getting all of the paper off. I just want to get the bulk of the paper off and, and create a, a splice in the tissue paper where the tape is so that it'll kind of be ready to um, tear off at the, when I'm finished. I just don't want all that bulk of paper kind of hanging off, if you will. Um, today's video went a little bit longer. I'd like to try to keep these to around 30 minutes. I think we're going to run over about 35 minutes uh, because, you know, the creativity just took me in a different direction. I added in some things I didn't anticipate. Um, but and in the end, I'm happy with the pieces and the way they came out. Um, 
you know, I, I want you to, if you don't take anything away from this, what I do want you to at least take away is that you, I didn't go into it thinking that I was going to create the piece that came out when it was done. The only thing I did was say, oh, I want to put some tissue paper on here. And then, oh, I want to put um, some texture on here. And, oh, maybe I want to put this color on here. And then I, I didn't know that going in ahead of time. And the reason I'm emphasizing that is because you don't have to know before, before you start what you're going to create. So here I'm realizing that my knife wasn't really that sharp and I flipped the blade around. <laughs> and uh, it's a little fidgety, but I think it's important to kind of establish that cut line by the tape now. If I wait till after I apply all those layers of texture, it'll be really too challenging to try to get it off. So I just want to try to make sure um, it's pre-established. And it did help... Um, significantly in the end. I just love the way wrinkled tissue paper looks. Um, I, it, it just, it's so, it feels so aged and worn and loved. And I just, I love that quality. And uh, when I apply texture on top of it, it will help to drive the way the texture, you know, reacts to it. Okay, so I have some modeling paste here. It's for, you know, acrylic base. And you can see I'm almost out. In fact, it's probably kind of dried up in here. And um, it really isn't that great. As you can see here, it's... I don't even know what to do with it, but I'm trying to make it work anyway, because I'm, I live kind of remotely and it's not like I can just run out and get this. And I didn't want to not create. Um, and I think I have some problems because of that, but in the end it worked out. I ripped the tissue paper quite a bit because of it, but. So right now what I'm trying to do in my mind, I'm just, I want to put some of this texture to sort of accentuate the texture. So see, I just ripped that. That was really dumb. But I'm just trying to accentuate the texture from the tissue paper with this, this molding paste. And you can kind of see right there how it does. That's what I'm after. Uh, but I think because it's kind of on the dry side, it's it's not doing quite what I want. But it is in certain areas, so I'm I'm gonna I think I'm gonna redo this exercise once I get some more product in my hands. I I really don't mind to redo it, and it would actually be a good comparison for you to see too, and you could compare the two. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, I did do a couple of uh, flip journal flip throughs, if you will, just to sort of give you a peek at, um, they're not necessarily a traditional journal, you know, they're more of how I use a journal concept to store pieces of art. So um, I do a lot of work like this on loose paper, and then I will either put them into a book for safekeeping or some of the larger pieces, I have them sort of stored in a portfolio sleeve. Um, and then every so often I will do them like in to a, uh, a folded journal. I think it's called a Concordia or I think it's a Concordia style journal. But I also have journals where I'm actually doing work in the journals as if they were uh, for that purpose. And I, and I review those as well. So that video, there's a video that I just released that goes through, the, it's, it's a, a journal flip through and there's several different journals in there. And some of those are also the ones that were made from magazines as well. I've had a lot of requests for that 
and uh, I'll be making one of those videos as soon as I can get my hands on a, a, a magazine that's appropriate for that. So now I'm just trying to see if I've finished what I wanted to try to do here. Um, there are areas that are exactly how I would like that. Oh, see, I ripped it. <laughs> there are areas that are exactly what I was after and then areas that are a little thicker than I wanted. Uh, but again, that's because the, the material, the medium is sort of dried out or drying out and it's a little thick. So I don't know right now I feel like I'm making it worse. <laughs> so I ultimately I decide that I want to just put a little bit of tissue paper over top of it. Um, it would probably be fine if I just left it but I don't know I probably shouldn't have did this either but who knows that's what I was compelled to do in the moment. Yes, I know Elmer's glue is not the best. I was honestly, I was kind of hoping that there might be a little bit of a reaction um, by using glue. Maybe it would get some cracking. Okay, you've probably seen me use these before. Um, these are something that I picked up. Um, see, I love that right there. That's fantastic. That where that just kind of hit those high points of the tissue paper. That's kind of what I was after. Um, but I'm kind of forcing this product and I keep trying to experiment with it and, and it works. Um, it's just, I'm getting, I don't know. It isn't the exact result I was after. So I'm just running with it and see what happens. I have a few different colors here of this product. I got them at a, um, a there's a, a craft store where they take donations and then they sell the craft products, at, you know, at like yard sale type prices and use that money to support a charity. And, and so I got these there and uh, they're great colors and, you know, a little bit past their life. They're a little dried out. Not totally, but a little bit. Um, but I still saw some value in them and I've used them a few times and I, I still kind of like them even though they're not really operating as intended, but that's okay. I probably should have waited for this to dry before I added in any more product, but it's never gonna happen with me. I'm just too impatient. I don't know. And sometimes I feel like that, that adds to the piece, right? That's part of who I am and what I do and how I create. Sometimes I wait, sometimes I don't. And I ripped the paper again. A lot of little strange noises here it's it's beautiful but it's windy so there's all these little weird noises in the backdrop I apologize so this is also the same product it's a delusions uh, paint and, you know, I think it's more for um, stamping and journaling and, and that sort of thing. And so I don't even know if using a palette knife is the way that that product is intended to be used. But given the, the condition of the product now, that's the way I think it should be used. And I'd be curious, I could probably um, explore adding, I think it's a water-based product, so I could probably add some uh, fluid medium would probably be the best bet and see if it would liquefy more. So you can see there it's, it's like, um, 
thick cookie dough or but actually that that could work a uh, fluid medium might be uh, mix that in there and maybe a little bit of water just a I don't know it might be might be past its prime but I, I'm kind of enjoying it in, in this um, stage of its life you know it's kind of perfectly imperfect that's a big thing for me it took me a long time to be able to embrace that concept And I'm going to use one more of those, uh, the pink. This one doesn't seem quite as uh, dry or coagulated. I don't know, that might be the right word. As the um, green one. The green one is the, kind of the worst. All right. You know, and at this point, I'm, I'm not, I'm not really thinking too much about what it is I'm doing. I'm just letting wherever it want the color wants to be put, to put it there. I'm just responding. I'm not sort of overthinking. Um, you know, I'm looking at it visually and saying, maybe I should put a little pink here, or maybe I should put a little, you know, green here. That's really all that's happening. Okay, so now I'm going to use, uh, I've used these before. I used them, I created them for a, a specific project. They are uh, acrylic paints that are, um, they have sand in them and a little bit of fluid medium. And they are in these squeeze bottles because I did a piece where I wanted the uh, paint to be, the application of the paint to be through the, the squeeze bottle. And so I have a lot of paint left over, so I've been experimenting with using them because I like the texture and um, I like what's uh, happening with them. I apologize, I have a, all my chickens are at the door. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you can see, there's like 12 chickens at the door. <laughs> have a, it's a glass door, so they're all like at the door. You might even hear them pecking a little. Uh, that's funny. But anyway, so uh, you're seeing a couple of those colors from that project, um, and uh, it's like a really deep, deep emerald uh, uh, turquoise, and then I'm that's sort of a, a, a gold color, and then I have a couple shades of turquoise that I'll put on here as well. But the paints are pre-mixed. I have them, and so I'm just kind of, I thought it would be interesting to add into this, uh, mainly because of the other, the added texture that it brings because it's got the sand in it. I really like the sand in the paint. Um, I need to do a lot more exploring with that overall, but I really like it. So at this point, I'm, I'm feeling it feels a little bit chaotic. Um, I have one more color that I want to put in there and I in my mind, I think because it's lighter, I put a little bit, a little bit more than I was putting to try to calm some of that chaos. And I'm not sure I, how I feel about how this came out, but I think it put a little bit too much in certain spots and had some challenges spreading it. So the one on the right's not so bad. I'm not so thrilled with the way the one on the left is coming out um so i'm just trying to sort of spread that around a little bit and change the sort of the horizontal um nature of that paint blob 
And so now I'm going to play with one of the main things I did know that I wanted to incorporate was this gilding paste that I absolutely love. Um, this stuff is really just juicy. I mean, the texture is amazing. You can apply this in so many different ways, but I really love using the knife for it. I love how it, it, it creates its own, um, it, it, it's textured, but it's not, I don't know how to explain it. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, if you, if you watch how it's applied there, right, it, it, it's, in some respects, it feels like toothpaste, but it's not as thick as toothpaste. It has its own, um, it wants to do its own thing, which I really like about it. So what I feel like I'm trying to do, what, what I'm thinking of in this moment is that I kind of want to tie it together with the gold and just calm it down a little bit. Even though I'm adding in another texture, another color, another medium, another layer, it's bringing everything together. And so I have to let that dry for a while before I can do anything else. And um, just experimenting now with, I want those gold textured elements to pop out. So I'm, I'm just tracing them with the Tombow. I'm using the Tombow because it's water-based and while it looks super dark when you first put it on, it will soften a little bit and it will almost look like a shadow and help to, to make those gold um, texture elements pop out a little. I'm trying not to be super specific, but just trying to I have a tendency to want to turn my work a lot. And so uh, if I didn't tell you, this piece of paper is attached to a piece of foam core board. And I really love to do that because it really gives it a little bit of rigidity, um, especially when you're working with paper and textures, the paper can get a little wonky and the foam core board really helps to keep it solidified. It's great for being having to move it around when you need it to dry and, um, I just like to pick the paper up. I'm constantly turning it around. You'll see that a lot. So I honestly don't know how I feel about this at this point. Um, I do know that sometimes when you have an idea, you just kind of have to keep following it out and keep, you just got to keep going with it because it just maybe needs to be a piece of the, the final puzzle and maybe as just an individual piece, it doesn't make sense. Early on, I found that I would never give pieces enough time. In other words, I'd get to a point and go, oh, I don't know if I like that. Or I, I don't really like where this went. And I would, I would give up and walk away from it. And I've learned that you just kind of got to keep going. You don't, you just let it go and see where it, see what happens. Just keep playing with it. 
if you don't like it when it's done, fine. You can use it for a million other things. But um, I've learned that giving up on a piece is never good. A piece could change direction from what maybe you thought or, you know, maybe you have to problem solve midway through or maybe it's going to challenge you to step outside of your comfort zone to try something different. Um, either way, keep, keep going all the way through. That, that's that's a, a, a big thing I've learned that I needed to learn. So I, I noticed that I, I will have paused this a few times in here because you kind of get what I'm doing. I, I always try to think about, uh, am I boring them? Is this too boring of a point? You know, so I'll, I'll sort of show you what I'm doing, pause the video, finish it out. And then uh, just because I, I don't know, I, I think that that helps. I don't know. You have to tell me. Do you want me to constantly let it go and just sort of go through the, the awkward points because <laughs> there's going to be awkward points. I can't talk the whole time, right? So there's going to be quiet time. There's going to be time where we're just sort of letting something play out. And you might notice here, so I'm kind of re, okay, so now I've, I've, I've sort of decided, oh, well, uh, let, let's do this sort of uh, loose lines in here. Um, I darkened up a few spots and um, I'm just letting the, the marker kind of go where it wants to go, really. I'm trying not to overthink it. I'm, you know, there's no right or wrong. I'm just sort of throwing these lines in here. You know, I don't know, maybe there are sort of like cracks in the texture or to mimic that concept. I'm just kind of cleaning up some of the edges. I don't really want to leave sharp corners per se. So I'm just sort of rounding all those off a little bit. Just kind of darkening some areas of the line. I don't want the line to be a consistent density across it. I want it to have lighter spots and darker spots and spots where it almost does it looks like it disappears and then comes back stronger. Um, I do decide to um, come back over those lines with water, and you'll see that in a bit. It's really turned into fall here a little bit. It's it's a little little bit. Uh, the sun's out, but there's some clouds. It's super windy. The leaves are really starting to change now. Um, it's a beautiful time of year. It's probably a little noisy, a little bit of background white noise for you. I apologize. So, right, I'm just taking a little bit of water uh, because the Tombow marker that I was using is a water-based uh, marker. I can come back with some water and just sort of, I want that line to sort of meld into the texture and fade in and out. 
uh, just the way the water would let it do. It'll lighten up some of those shadows. One of the things I always find interesting when you're creating is that like for me right now in this piece, I'm kind of in the piece. Um, it's taped off, you know, and you're kind of deep in creation. So it's hard to kind of see it as a finished piece. I, I, I find that challenging to explain and maybe I'm not using the right words. But what I usually have to do is take a picture of it and then walk away from it and then go back and look at the picture like in my phone and then I see it completely differently. It's almost like I had to pull myself out of sort of the flow of the, the, the creation and then see it differently. Sometimes I have to leave it overnight and come back because I just can't, you just get to a point where you just can't see it that way. So I like what the water's doing here. I like how it's sort of you know, runs a little bit into the texture and bleeds the, the ink a little bit. So I really like what that did. So I'm just at this point, I'm kind of unsure of what I what I really want to do. Uh, I'm not sure is the piece done? Is it not done? And I've just decided that I'm just going to take it off the board. Um, ultimately, I do end up doing something else to it, which you'll see. But for me right now, I just need to get it off the board. I need to kind of see what they look like individually and without all the messiness of the tape and the paint on the tape. I'm basically just using painter's tape. I get the low tack, but it still rips the page every time. <laughs> but I'm not super worried about that right now. These are just, you know, pieces that I'm creating. Um, you know, if they were going to be um, for completion, they would be matted and that sort of thing. And this one rips really bad, and I don't know why. I don't, I, I'm wondering if you can see that. Yeah, you can see how bad that ripped the paper right there. And I'm almost wondering if it wasn't something to do with the glue, because I used the Elmer's glue, which really isn't the right stuff. But that's okay. I, w I would rather create than worry about having the right product or the right tape or whatever. And that, that's uh, been a big learning thing for me. And so that's another big thing to take away. If you're inspired to create, just create. Um, and don't, oh my goodness, you can probably hear all the... It's really windy and I have a metal roof <laughs> and so the leaves are all hitting the roof sorry oh there's a walnut <laughs> okay so I'm I'm, I'm kind of happy with this um, I don't I'm undecided uh, what what I'm gonna do and I let it uh, sit for a while and I came back to it with uh, this is a, a crocodile stencil that I have and I used to do um, uh, like a high-end faux finishing and this is a, a stencil I use to create you know a crocodile texture and finishes and so I'm just going to use some white um, acrylic gesso and uh, sort of stamp um, the crocodile loosely and randomly on here I don't want it to be solid but I want it to sort of be like fade in and out if you will
And unfortunately, I know you. someone's going to ask me where to get this stencil, and I, I really can't even answer that question. Uh, it is about, uh, it's probably 20 years old. Am I giving away my age? Yikes. Um, it's, it's about 20 years old. Um, I had gotten a bunch of certifications from, um, you know, uh, uh, certain product lines for faux finishing and things of that nature. And it was, it was something that they had sold. I don't even know if they are, uh, still in business. I can do, I'll do a quick Google search and see if, if they are. And if it is, I'll put it in the description. If not, you know, I'm sure you could Google crocodile stencil and you might come across something uh, similar. So at this point, I'm wondering, should I have used black? Do I like the white? I'm unsure about the white, but. And uh, if you're if you're new here, uh, thanks for watching. You know, I do things perfectly imperfect. This is just supposed to be uh, candid, real, live, as it happens, um, recording of what I'm creating in a particular day. And, uh, you know, it's taken me a long time to sort of come to grips with um, things not having to be perfect and that I'm not trying to create a masterpiece. I'm just trying to make... I'm just trying to play. I'm just trying to have some fun. So I love this. I'm liking where this is going. I feel like it needs a little bit of help. And if you're if you're subscribed to me and back and here to see more of what I do, I really appreciate you following me. And uh, I hope you're enjoying it and getting some value out of it. Please feel free to share your comments. I like to hear from you. I like to hear what you have to say. Um, but, uh, you know, in any case, you know, make sure you like the video, you know, don't forget to like it each time you watch uh, or when you watch. And if you if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And if you haven't, be sure to hit the bell notification. That'll let you know when a new video comes out. Uh, my goal, is, I, I create almost every day of the week and um, I'm working towards create recording that as much as possible. So. Right now, my goal is to get three to four videos out a week. Um, adding in the technology piece is something that's new and it creates some challenges and some delays and hiccups and that kind of thing. But uh, we'll, we'll get there, we'll work it out. My goal is to just let you see my process. So I'm less worried about how perfect my video is that you know I just want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So it'll get better with time. And so I'm using a, a Posca marker here with of in white and just sort of helping the stencil because it's so heavily textured, the stencil and the paint, you know, I, maybe I should have just used the marker to begin with um, and I would have gotten a little bit crisper line, but that's okay. I really like the non-specific nature of the way the stencil came out. So I'm happy with that. So I'm just going to help out all these white spots on both pieces. And um, I'm feeling like it needs a little bit of help. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the black and I'm determining right now where sort of the shadow would be. And I'm just giving it a tiny bit of a shadow line. Just because I want the white spots to kind of pop out a little bit. We're going to be doing a lot of really cool things on this channel um, once I kind of get myself in the right uh, mojo and rhythm of doing these regularly. Uh, but I have some great ideas and some challenges and uh, things that you'll be able to participate in and um, things to help you with your creativity. And so now I'm just repeating that on the other piece.
And I am going to uh, have in the description box a link to uh, a place for you to give me your email if you would like to, to receive um, some of these things that I'm talking about with the challenges. And don't worry, I don't send a million emails. Um, I, I spent years as a, a multi-award winning marketing director, so trust me, I'm not, I'm not here to uh, bombard you with emails. But I will, from occasion, on occasion, send something out, and it'll be of great value when I do that. So if you'd like to be a part of that, you'll be able to give me your email with that link in the description. And so right now, I'm just sort of accentuating that shadow a little bit. This is just a dark gray Posca marker, and I'm just kind of like hugging the corner there, almost like an L. I'm not sure I'm thrilled with it, but... And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a metallic silver and just highlight the, which I don't know if you can really even see that on camera, but the, the metallic Posca markers are really fabulous. They catch the light wonderfully and they really do, it will make it seem like light is hitting that corner. I, you know, that might get lost in the translation here on the video, but in person it really gives it a nice little highlight, almost like that light's hitting that top corner. Just felt like some of those edges weren't quite, I needed a little bit of crispness. And then uh, what I'm going to do right now is just sort of outline it with the black Posca marker, just kind of crisp up that edge a little bit. Really makes a big difference, doesn't it? It's, it's such a tiny detail, but wow, it really, really makes a big difference. I think in the final product anyway. But we don't, there's only a little less than a minute left on the time, but I, I'm glad you're here. I hope you enjoyed it. Tell me your favorite part about these pieces. In the comments, be sure to like and uh, subscribe, hit the bell. So I just want you to be able to see these side by side so you can see the completed pieces. I hope you enjoyed this creative exploration with Tammy Collins where we explore, experiment, evolve, express, and evoke emotion through our creativity.